Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the F4 Phantom 2, uh, specifically how to input and kind of play with the navigational waypoints in the WSO's workstation in the backseat. So let's get started. So first things first, um, one of the things you have to remember with navigation is that this is an old school airplane. Uh, there's a lot of things on it that are a little different than uh, what you're probably used to in like an F-16 or F-18 or something. But that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't work. It's just different. So today's focus is going to be completely on dealing with our good friend over here, the good old INS computer, which is a surprisingly good navigational system if you're mindful of how some of its kind of goofy bits sort of work is the best way to describe it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how you can input waypoints and kind of sort of a workflow as well as kind of how you got to fiddle with it a little bit. Now, of course, we're all assuming here that you managed to get yourself this far. So we've got ourselves up in the air. Everything got synchronized and all that on the ground. We're not interested in that today. Instead, like I said, we're just interested in kind of playing with the waypoint aspect of it. So I'm going to go ahead and climb down here and kind of walk you through the different controls. First things first, um, this stuff on the left-hand side is really, um, I kind of call it backup if you want to think about it another way. One of the items you have here at the top is a variation. To get your magnetic variation, of course, you have to know what region of the world that you're in at that particular time to be able to know the difference between magnetic north and true north. This is just something you got to kind of look up. One nice thing about the variation is you have this little switch here, which also acts as kind of like a little backup to kind of give you a heads up to let you know that the uh, system is working. Uh, if this needle is shooting over here for some reason, like it messed up your variation, it'll let you know with this one right here. Swinging down here, this allows us to dial in the wind manually in the event that we have a situation where, uh, for example, uh, we lose our inertial navigation system. We have to use the air data computer. Uh, the nice thing is if you ever need to know what the wind is, uh, you can just go to the briefing. And if you scroll down here, it'll actually describe it to you. One of the things you got to watch out for here is uh, meters per second in 35 degrees. When you come in here, of course, you see 243, you see 34. See how the issue can start? Just be uh, kind of careful with it. And then the last thing is, is this little control down here, which allows us to dial in our desired waypoint. Now, the way desired waypoints work on this thing are a little different than you're probably used to. You have two settings. You have what they call target two and target one. Target one refers to where we're currently interested in. Target two refers to the item that we have in memory. Uh, right now, if I were to switch this to target one and make an adjustment, let me go ahead and zoom my head out a little bit so you can see it. Uh, we're currently selected to navigational computer, by the way. Now, if I were to come over here and let's say I uh, grab this knob and twist it, you will notice these numbers are changing because target one is real time adjustments to our specific control. Now, the reason that gets a little funky is because if you're trying to make adjustments to it for other purposes, you just have to be kind of mindful that that's going to be going on as you're making those adjustments. The uh, great thing about Target 1, of course, is it enables us to be able to select something on the ground that we're interested in and fly to it directly. Now, for example, let's say we want to fly to Creech Air Force Base here. If I click on this, I can see that it's latitude, longitude, and latitude is 3635. So I can come down here, I can dial in 36. So we'll go to 35 real quick here. 3635 uh, is about where we want to go there. And of course, it is, uh, let's see here on the longitude, looking at 11541. So I can come in here and I can actually dial in 11541. Everything's reversed, by the way. Get ready to be confused. <laughs> 115, 36, 35, 114, 41. I am target one selected. If I look over here at my navigational readout, I can see that it is 13 miles away. Make sure we're on the right mode, by the way. 13 nautical miles away. And I can tell you it is roughly at a 230. If I were to zoom out real quickly and actually grab onto my handy dandy measurement tool here let's grab it real quickly and do a drag you can see very clearly just like i said not bad huh but the real magic here is your ability to store a coordinate and then change between them let's say for example uh, we wanted to help out our, our pilot up in the front seat uh, what i want to do is i want to fly into nellis air force base but i wanted to start with a 10 nautical mile offset over here in garnet as an example keep in mind we're ripping along pretty fast here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to dial in my final destination. That sounds like a bad thing. Of course, if it crash, it is my final destination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Nellis real quickly here. And I notice that it's a 3613. So I'm just going to come in here and do 3613. I'm just going to dial that in real quickly here. 3613. And of course, I'm gonna come over here and I'll pop into this one right here. We're gonna click that one real fast. And I can see it is 115.02. So remember, this is reversed. It'll confuse you a lot the first 50 times you do it. And then it still confuses me after that too. <laughs> 115.02, and we can see this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go click, click. So what I have done is I've taken this coordinate and I've saved it into the memory of target 
too. So as a matter of fact, if I were to come over here and look, you can see how far away Nellis Air Force Base is, uh, which is cool. But remember, we wanted to go from Garnet up here all the way down to Nellis Air Force Base. So we need a way to go here and switch to Nellis Air Force Base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap this to target one, and I'm going to dial in Garnet. So I'm going to come up here, here, just going to hold my mouse over it. Is uh, You can look at the top of the screen real quick. 3623. So I'm going to come in here and do 3623. And I did it backwards, told you. You will do it backwards about a thousand times also, but don't worry about it. And then for this component here, again, we're looking at 114.52, 114.52, 114.52. Success. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to set my target to target one, which means this airplane is currently looking at that first waypoint at Garnet. And we can see it's right off of 12 o'clock, and it's about 21 nautical miles. When I cross Garnet, I'm going to go click and set myself to target two, which as you can see is Nellis Air Force Base, which is a little offset to our right, which makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that on right there to leave it at position one. So you can see how incredibly useful that can be to set up a bombing attack. Uh, for example, if we knew we were gonna be bombing Nellis today, I can dial that in, fly to Garnet, and basically switch over that waypoint when I cross it and use that as my endpoint and my bombing point that I have down there below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back up into the front seat real quickly here. I'm actually gonna go down here. You can see navigational computers are been selected and i can see that my desire whoa oh, nice try hot shot nice try three o'clock low i don't care about that let's go ahead and I'll take myself a nice gentle turn i'll zoom to a more comfortable position and i'm just going to go ahead and enjoy my nice gentle turn here i'll flip on my little flight director real quickly here click Ah, and you can see because of my arrow right here, it is showing me that I'm going to be heading to that particular point. Remember, this is our Garner right? endpoint, if you want to think about it. And I know from that point, of course, you can't adjust your course. If you knew what your course is, you could actually come in here and fiddle with that if you wanted to. But right now, I can tell you just by looking down at my HSI that I am about 50 nautical miles away from that point I selected. Remember, that's position one, and I'm just choo chewing directly towards it at max speed. Now, one of the things I really love is if you actually, whoa, if you pay attention to what you're doing with your airplane, one of the things I really love, if you come down here, you can actually see pretty clearly that we have a flight director which will actually guide you left and right to the particular position, which is a, one of these, another really, really handy things that the designers of this thing popped in there to make your life a little bit simpler. So me as the pilot, because the guy in the back seat got me all squared away with that first waypoint, I can literally just guide the plane towards that waypoint. I can tell him about 10 miles away and about 26,000 feet. Uh, you're going to get a little uh, disoriented flying this one, trust me. Just make sure your navigational computer is selected as far as your navigation source goes. Nothing like not looking out the window in Nevada. <laughs> Seems kind of dangerous. Now we're about eight nautical miles away. Looking pretty groovy there. Awesome. Awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. Looking pretty solid. We got ourselves centered nicely. We're at 18,000 feet here. Six nautical miles away from Garnet. Now we'll see just how close we can get it today. I don't think I'm going to be perfect, but it'll be close. It'll be close. And one of the things they do when I work with a pilot in the front seat is I'll actually communicate with them and say, hey, uh, when we get to that point, it's going to be like a 95 degree right turn. So they know to actually lead the turn a little bit. Because right now we're ripping down at, you know, 0.85. So we're going pretty quick right now. Again, I'm just going to enjoy that nice little one. And the interesting thing is Jester will actually automatically switch over the waypoint. Uh, so be very, very mindful of that when he does that. Right, uh, turn point is updated. Pause. Let's see how close we got. Oh, we're so good. <laughs> now, Jester, of course, I knew that we're desiring the next waypoint here. And uh, what we would have to do here is, depending on how you programmed it in the back seat, and I bet you he messed up my waypoint, you would now snap to position two, which should have been saved in memory, which should have been Nellis's position here. Now, if you snap to position two and you notice that your lovely little indicator here doesn't snap itself to the new correct position, usually what that simply means is um, when you were dialing it in, you accidentally uh, dialed in the wrong waypoint first, or when you set the reset button now you did it in the wrong order very very common mistake like i said it's one of those kind of things i've probably done that about a thousand times also but i'm gonna go ahead and take my nice gentle right turn anyway yep you can see that i set it at the wrong time or um of course jester changes it too so be very mindful of that as well so there's nellis I'm going to go ahead and I'll uh, center myself out. Now we're going to show you the next most important thing that you can do with that system. And that is resetting your INS position. Now the reason this gets so important, ah, Chester, you goofed me up. 
ah, I hate it when it does that. Not going to worry about it, though. So when we reset our INS position, we're basically telling the computer this is where we are, as opposed to where it thinks we are. Now, the way we do this is we have to pick a position on the ground, and we have to overfly it and know exactly where it is. For me, my favorite positions to pick are usually runway intersections. Like if I know that I can hit this point right here, I know that I can use this as my component for the purposes of my INS reset. So what I need to know is the position of this point here. And one of the things you can actually do is you can come in here and go like that and actually plop that on the ground and just sort of remind you of uh, what a specific position is. So what I'll actually do here is I can do N3614, and then I'll do, uh, this is West 11502. And the reason this is so useful is I now have that sitting there waiting for me. So I can actually just quickly reference it. So to set this up, this is when things get a little goofy. You know, it requires a lot of communication in order to get this to work. What I'm going to do is put this into the set position. Now, you've got to be careful. Right click is set, left click is fixed. Uh, we just broke our navigational position, by the way. So I'm going to right click to set. And now what we're going to do is we're going to dial into the top two digits here what our initial fix is going to be. Now, luckily for me, 30 14. I'm just going to come over here and 3614 it. You have to click and then you can drag. And notice you're going to get an out of sync warning here. Oh, that's correct. That's what we expect. And the other thing we're going to do too is I'm going to come down here 11502, click and hold, and we're just going to crank it to 11502. 11502. Perfection. So now what we do is we're going to left click on the switch to put it into the fixed position when we cross that point. I can't say that enough. So let's go ahead and get back up in the front seat here real quickly. We'll un unpause here. And again, this is why you have to work so, so carefully with the fellow in the front seat, because the fellow in the front seat is going to be the one who can see these things better than you can. Now, you can't see very well. Uh, it's just kind of one of those little welcome to flying kind of a thing you have to sort of stress about. Now, the nice thing is the inertial system, unless you've been really, really rough with it and you broke it, um, it should be fairly reliable uh, for the purposes of um, being able to get you at this position you need to be at. So let's go ahead and uh, feed a little bit of power in here. That's looking pretty good right now. I'll feed even more power into it. Ah, I gotta love this thing. This thing is such a pig. It's fantastic. All right. Now, one of the things people ask me is, do you have to um, fly at low altitude when you cross the position? The answer is no, you don't. Uh, the only thing you have to do is cross the position. So uh, that's just kind of the important point. And another thing that makes it a little bit challenging, other than the fact that I'm attempting to do the front seat and back seat simultaneously, is that we're basically going to be in a situation where the system does not update instantaneously. It actually has a short delay. So uh, one of the things you have to be mindful of is when you go to reset the position, you have to actually lead it by usually about a second to two seconds. It depends just how far you want to go with it. All right, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my gosh, we're doing too many things at once. Ready? On your mark, set. So I'm going to jump into the back seat. This is incredibly, incredibly reckless. <gasps> reckless on my part. Uh, uh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Release. And like that, we have now updated the position of my aircraft. Uh, the INS system now recognizes that position as being where we're supposed to be. Now, uh, one of the things I like to do with that, of course, is I like to check it just to make sure that I didn't absolutely goof it up because uh, you will goof it up about the first 50 times that you do it. Again, you have to be so fast, absolutely perfect uh, when you do that little system update there. Otherwise, like I said, you're not going to have an update thing. And of course, then your pod's out of whack. And then if you're doing an IP for like a bombing run, all that's out of whack, which is why a lot of people update on the IP, assuming they've got like a river or something to do. So let's go ahead and pop in the back seat again real fast and let's just do a quick idiot check here. So one of my favorite idiot checks, of course, is to use something that we know where it is. So if I were to come down here, we have LSV Las Vegas, and we know that it's at, oh, uh, let's see, let's call that uh, 3614. I'll pause for a second here and we'll go back to 3614. So uh, back seat, back seat. There we go. <laughs> Confused yet? So we're going to go over here, and I'm going to set this target one. I'm going to go to 3614 here. 3614. Uh, Looks pretty groovy to me. I'm going to go over to my this position here, and we're looking for uh, 11501. So if I come over here, and uh, like I said, you're going to get backwards. If you click and drag, by the way, it goes really, really fast. 11501, 3614, 11501. Target one is selected. That's what we want. What we're going to do now, of course, is that we're going to grab the TACAN. This is a TACAN channel 12. Jump up front real quickly here. I have more luck in the front than I do in the back, but um, a lot of times I end up having to set it in both spots for whatever reason. 12 X-ray, transmit and receive looks good to me. We'll go ahead and take navigational command. Jump in the back seat just for idiot check here. Come over here. We can also set this one to 12 X-ray. 
And again, like I said, there's a little bit of desynchronization between the front seat and the back seat when it comes to the Tacan. It's not the most stressful thing in the world. Well, let's do some more idiot checks. Okay, so right now, if I look at my navigational computer, we've got a bearing and track one and two there. Oh, we're about six, seven miles away. Position is uh, basically right behind us. Let's go over to Tacan. Six, seven miles away. Ha ha. It should theoretically point at exactly the same spot. So it all comes down to how good of a fix you did. You can actually see there that this is a showing about 34 degrees in the nav computer. On the actual tack end display, you can see it's showing closer to 20, about 30 degrees there. So there is some inaccuracy inside of our navigational system, even though we set it. But the important thing is you probably notice that our distance to the two spots is roughly the same. So, you know, if I come over here again, if I can pop over to tack end real quickly here, I get about eight. If I pop over to nav computer, you can see I get the same number distance wise. So we have some lateral deviation in our actual inertial navigational system, just to show you how difficult it is to get it perfect. But at the same time is how effectively you can basically check that with a little system to make sure that you've done a good job. Again, really important when you're doing bombing runs or using the uh, basically targeting pods. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to hit exactly what it is you're trying to hit. But as you can see, it's a really, really solid system, and it does work. Um, like I said, you do have to kind of babysit it as far as uh, making sure it stays reliable. Uh, one thing I always like to tell people with it is just do an idiot check. If you click from target two to target one and the thing doesn't change, did you set it to reset? Did you accidentally click it to standby, which is something that I do? Um, some people completely ignore uh, the target two position, which is totally fine. You're certainly welcome to do that. It just means you have to be really quick at fiddling these knobs for the purposes of it. If you have a fancy joystick, you could probably go in there and actually adjust those yourself for the purposes of dialing in those particular positions. And you could do everything through target one if you've got fast fingers. But again, having that target two to be able to switch between in a hurry works really, really well if that's something that you're trying to do. Enjoy.